Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Stratford and the Copper Box Arena. Uh, we've got Euro Cup women's quarterfinal action between the London Lions and Melakai Kasiri here this evening. Michael Hanson Morris, Kyla Nelson, and Kylo. 11-0 for Lions, looking to make 12 and get into the semi-final. They are. They've had a great season so far. They've made history at the Copper Box already. Why not again today? They're coming out eight points up right now in the second leg, so it's all to play for. And obviously the visitors from Turkey, huge win in the league on Sunday against Galatasaray of all teams. They'll be coming in with confidence and some players that can really cause some damage. It's all about momentum. We've seen it. Hamby had a great game in the first leg, so they'll be ready to play today. And obviously, before we looked at, look ahead and break this game down, we're going to throw back to last time London Lions were here when we took on Lonatec Guernica from Spain. She'll look to go left, step back through Megan Gustafsson, friendly goal, but the patience once again. And something that's very comfortable for Holly Winterburn is a right-hand layup. Great job finding her rhythm um, in this third quarter. As Samuelson, she'll have a chance for the three-point play. Winterburn, Samuelson corner, no mistake, but that's created off the switch and Holly Winterburn going, I need to be a playmaker. Guernica give themselves a good account as Indina. Great ball movement by the line, Snitsina finds Beckford-Norton, she'll shoot over Dodson, string, music, Shanice, Beckford-Norton. Now coming back into pick and roll, Lions going to be patient, use all the shot clock. Fag Benley, fake on Dodson, reverse layup is good. And there were the highlights of the London Lions' victory over Lonatec Guernica that moved them on to the last eight. And now we get to look ahead to tonight's game. And Kyla, London Lions winning on the road by eight. What really impressed you with that Lions performance? Who is the question, right? Carly yeah. Samuelson, 25 points. Megan Gustafson, 26 points. But I think it's going to be a battle in the paint. It was even in the first leg, 28 points each. So there's going to be a fight tonight. Yeah, and obviously for the visitors as well, Dierica Hamby, the new signing, a huge performance, 24 points personal as well. What are you looking forward to seeing from Kasiri? Derek Hamby, absolutely 13 points in the first quarter, but for them, it's about disrupting the Lions on the defensive end so they can push pace and get scores easily. And obviously, Hamby's going to have a huge job guarding Temi Fagbelling and Megan Gustafson. And earlier, Kyla caught up with Megan Gustafson to get her thoughts ahead of tonight's game. Hi, Megan. Since last time we saw you, it's been a busy five weeks for you. Trophy final win and MVP, signing a two-year deal with the Las Vegas Aces in the WNBA, and of course, qualifying for the Olympics with the Spanish national team. Can you summarize the start of 2024 for us? It's been pretty wild. Honestly, I've been so grateful for all the opportunities that I've been given, um, but also being here with the Lions and doing so well in, in Euro Cup, we're really excited to keep on moving forward. Um, but at the same time, there's been a lot of different things going on in my life. And, um, you know, I'm just ready to take full advantage of whatever opportunity comes. And thankfully, that's, that's gone pretty well thus far in 2024 and really looking forward to add to that. Nice. And coming into this second matchup with Kasari, it seemed to be kind of the battle of the bigs in, in the first leg. Do you look forward to that kind of challenge? And what do you see today being like? Absolutely. You know, I have all respect in the world for, for what they brought last week. They really challenged us in the post, especially, um, you know, but they've got really good versatile guards as well. And so, um, you know, we're going to we're going to kind of look back and um, see what we learned from the last game. But at the same time, we can't we can't go away from what we're do what we do best, um, no matter what they throw at us. So we just got to stay together um, and we do have the home court advantage. So we're going to be leaning on the, our home crowd for that. And it'll be really special. Talking about special, can you tell me how it feels to be a part of this team and a part of making history with the London Lions? It's been really special. I love these girls. They've been fighting. They've been um, really just welcoming me into their family, and that's what's really important to me and to everybody else. And so we're just we're just happy. Um, we always have fun with each other. I think uh, that's what's most important in terms of chemistry and team building is, um, yes, we're focused and we're intense, but at the same time, we love playing with each other, and I think that's what really makes our team um, click. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck tonight. Thank you. And there are the thoughts of Lions centre Megan Gustafson ahead of tonight's game. And Kyla, really break down that performance now. And what impressed you was the ability for Lions to stretch the floor with Megan and Temi and expose the Kasiri defence. Yeah, they shot the ball really well from the three-point line. But most importantly, their big shot the ball really well. Megan Gustafson was 50%, four for eight from three. And you could tell she wanted to shoot the ball early on in the game. And obviously, for Lions, more the same. But also, you got the ability to change things up. We saw some inverse pick and roll with the ball 
the bigs handling the ball in pick and roll. Just talk about the stress that puts on a defense. It's so much stress. Bigs usually are a lot slower laterally, so putting them into situations, making them move and guard the ball is really difficult for a 40-minute game. And obviously, another big piece for the Lions, Shea Petty added for the quarterfinals, came in replacing Juicy Landrum. What do you see from Shea in that first leg with her WNBA experience? Experience is number one, but number two is defense. I think she brings a lot of in intensity on that end. And on the offensive end, she had 10 assists. She finds ways to give her teammates the ball so they can score. Yeah, and obviously, Shea, one of four Lions players with WNBA deals. And you can kind of see the confidence starting to grow in this group as they connect as well. Absolutely. And once you've signed, you have that confidence to be able to keep going because you know what season you've got coming up in the WNBA. So it's just all about being able to put your best foot forward for this game. Yeah, and obviously, let's talk about our visitors as well. We've already mentioned Erica Hamby, but the Euro Cup Player of the Month in January, Janitra Petronite. Huge numbers, but Lions did a really good job in the first leg, only for holding her to five of six shooting. Yeah, they did. They really limited her shot um, takes, which is a really good job. And they forced Kasiri to have to only play their starting five for most of the game. Really good job and be able to control her. Yeah, and obviously tempo is huge in this game. We think Kasiri, we've got, they got some success out of the press. We think it's going to be high tempo for them to try and chase down a deficit. That's the thing, right? They did. They found success from pushing the ball, and they did that from pressing the lines and disrupting their offense. They did a great job pushing it. I'd like to see Wiley get to the rim more and finish at a higher percentage. Yeah, and obviously they're the adjustments. The coaching staff for Lions have been working on all week long. Earlier, you were able to catch up with head coach Stella Katsudu and get her thoughts on tonight's game. Coach Stella, obviously a successful start for 2024 for your team. What are the biggest areas of growth that you're pleased with? So uh, every day it's a uh, growth for us. We try to improve every day. We work very hard. The ladies are doing a very good job. And um, it's an everyday pleasure to see them uh, getting better and play better and better. You come into the second leg with an eight-point lead. But Kasari at home had some issues for you. What do you think you need to make sure you take care of tonight? We really need to control the transition game. They are a team that they are they want to run and they are very good at it. We received a lot of points on the home on the game there, so we need to control the tempo of the game, slow them down, force them to play more on the half court. And uh, in contrary, we want to run, but uh, we should take uh, we should have better shot selection so we can control better the rhythm of the game. Thank you very much. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, once again, and welcome back inside the Copper Box here on the Olympic Park as we have a London Lions taking on Melikai Kasiri from Turkey. London Lions winning leg one of this tie, 87 points to 79. Megan Gustafson, who we talked to in the pregame, 26 points. Carly Sampson, 25 points. And as for the visitors, it's Dierica Hambe leading the way with 23 points. Kyla. Obviously, the way Lions won this game was on the offensive glass against a strong Kasiri team on the, on the rebound and normally. Yeah, if you actually look at the stats, everything was really close between these two teams, but the one thing the Lions did really well in the first leg was offensive rebound. 15 0 boards, guess who had five? Temi Fagbenli. She was huge on the boards and allowed them to have 15 second chance points throughout the game. Yeah, and obviously the other thing that was huge is Kasiri in that opening quarter lived on the free throw line. They had 10 of 11 from the line. And in the second half, like, Syria only shot three free throws. So how important was it to the Lions to limit the easy opportunities on the road? It's really important, especially because the Lions didn't get to the free throw line much either. They only shot six free throws throughout the game. So to be able to limit Kasseri on their end on the free throw line, to stop them from getting easy points is huge, especially how efficient they were being at that position. Yeah, and as we are ready to welcome the two teams onto the floor. A little bit about our visitors from Turkey, Malakai Kasiri, and tied in eighth for 11 and 13 at place. And obviously a huge win on Saturday against, oh sorry, Sunday against Galatasaray, 105 98. The two Americans led out right now by Aaron Ellenberg Wiley, 34 points. Her and Hamby, 68 points, but on 28 of 40 shooting. How impressive a night that was. So efficient, so productive, but that's what this team expects 
from those two big players. They need them to, to be able to score the ball because they rely heavily on their starters. So Handy and Wiley need to come out with that energy today in order for them to get a win at Box. Yeah, and as we're ready to welcome the London Lions, obviously very briefly looked upon it, but the addition of Shay Petty to the roster, we'll talk about it in a minute, but lines are now complete and they're looking like they're just starting to gel. They are complete. They just need that one little piece to, to bring it all together. And what better than a season veteran in Shay Petty, who played at the highest level possible, really played a digit later on in the season. And this is our home debut. Indeed, well, home at the Copper Box, obviously a win at home against Oakland is in the league, but Lighting so dominant domestic obviously since last time we were here, the trophy final win against Essex in what was it? Captivate final lights, had some struggles, but then they bounced back domestically. They're 11 and 0 with an average winning margin still of 47 points, and that was highlighted by the win against Cardiff on Saturday, 95 to 19. Yeah, it gives them a lot of momentum going into the World Cup game. So yes, maybe the margin is a little bit larger than a lot of the other games that they're going to be out. But what it allows the Lions to do is shoot games like shots and really work on their efficiency to be able to score at a high rate without taking those shots as a team. Indeed, and obviously the team is so important for Lions. We've seen depth all year long, but now it's about your star players as well being important and stepping up in these moments. It is. We saw how much they heavily relied, both teams on their starters, with limited minutes for the bench. They need to be able to come out fast, and both teams will want to push the pace, and they'll want to get into a scoring rally early in this first quarter. Yeah, as we're about to go through final preparations for this game, and our referees for this evening's game, crew chief Amel Durar from France, Paulina Gadjadou from Poland and Timen Last from Netherlands, your three officials on the floor tonight. And Kyle, obviously, will circle back to the visitors. We've already talked about a little bit in the pre-game, but you have to really. Diera Kahambi, the new addition to the Kasiri roster, brought in in the middle of February ahead of the international window. She's come in and made such an impact for this team, averaging 25 points a game domestically already. Yeah, what a pick up for them late on in the season and, and she's the reason why this team can compete with the likes of the London Lions. Again, another really high level player, but she's a big guard. It's kind of how I see her game. Of course she plays in the post and she has to battle with the likes of Megan Gustafson and Timothy Benley, but she has a lot of guard-like skills, ability to square up and drive, especially in transition and shoot from the perimeter. Yeah, and I think that says it all with Hamby. Five assists a game. 3.2 still, she's someone that can do that, and obviously a two-time WNBA All-Star, two-time WNBA Six Player of the Year, and that experience has really helped the visitors, but what do you think they need to do from a depth point of view today to try and edge out Lions? Yeah, depth is huge. I mean, both teams, I think, is bench production. In the first leg, Kasseri only has six points and Lions only have two. The Lions are a little bit deeper in their roster, with the likes of Katznitsina and Ivana Katznic being able to come off the bench. But on the other end, Kasseri relied on their starters who played over 30 minutes each to stay in that game. Yeah, and the starters played a huge amount in that win on Sunday as well. They will start with a point to prove, trying to chip away that deficit. But as for the hometown London Lions, we've already talked about it, the addition of Shay Petty and kind of what really impressed you with her game in the first leg last week. Her game is just effortless, really. Her ability to find her teammates, especially in transition. She's a leader, and you can tell they now have structure in their half-court offense because she has the ball in her hands. But on the other hand, we haven't seen her score that much yet. And that's another thing she can bring. Not only as a small guard can she get scrappy rebounds and pass the ball, but we're going to see a bit more scoring from her today, I assume. Yeah, last week, Shea Petty, five points on two of seven shoot. But as you said, those 10 assists, seven rebounds as well, as she kind of beds into this Lions team. Shea missed last year with injury and obviously that late pickup takes a bit of time to get the legs under you but she feels like she's meshing with this group well. She does and she, she has familiar, seen familiar faces on this team obviously from the WNBA. She's 35 though so she's going to have niggles here and there but she found a program that really needed her stability and yes she only scored five points but she was plus 15 um, in her plus minus extremely important for that first leg win for the Lions. Yeah, and obviously the big thing for the series, tidy up the glass, but then can you slow down the perimeter shooting of Megan Gustafson and Tammy Frank Bentley? 
who obviously connected a lot, but what adjustments do you expect to see from both sides? For the Lions, it's an ability to stay consistent. You saw they were able to create bigger leads, but then allowed the series transition, and they like to can be to keep them in the game. So for them, they want to establish a lead and keep it for as long as possible. On the other end, it's the Kasiri team. Again, we talked about bench production. Again, disruption and defense being out of the zone. The full court press for half court man. But offensively, I'd like to see a little bit more structure for them. They like the pick and roll. They're more patient and be able to read their plays and get really high level scoring from the paint. And you talk about pick and roll, you've got to go look at the league guard, Aaron Ellenberg Wiley. Really struggled last week, 4 of 17 from the floor. But someone who lives in that middle pick and roll, 61 possession, one of the highest in Euro Cup women. And for her, she's got to get going in transition to allow everything else to open up. She does. I think she's the key to this game for this for this Turkish side because Lavi's spoken about, she has the ball in her hand a lot. She's quick, she's shifty. And she played over 33 minutes last game because her coaches trust her and know what she can bring to this team. Now she has to come out and do it in one of the biggest games of the season. And on the flip side in the guard position, we have to talk about it. Carly Samuelson, 25 points last week, 5 of 8 from downtown. And we've seen it in big moments. Lines have gone to Carly early to get this place energised. And you can already hear the crowd how energetic they are for tonight's matchup. Oh, you can hear it. They're making history already playing this quarterfinal the game and so this crowd are ready to see what the Lions can do but Carly Samuelson they'll try and run plays for her early not just for the three-point shot but they'll actually find her posting up and flashing in the middle. Starters on the floor for the Lions Winterburn, Gustafsson, Petty, Fag Bentley and Samuelson for the visitors it's Kuwich who will wear one, Wiley, Ellenberg one and three, Hamby five, Gunai seven and Petronite 13 as we are underway. Euro Cup Women's Quarter Final, London Lions lead by eight on aggregate, but we know this Lions team will want to win this game and they'll go to 12 0 on the season as Fag Benley early on. Lions a little bit slow to get this initial set. Looks like, looks like a little bit of mis miscommunication as Petty tries to find Gustafsson. That's a matchup switch. Hamby has got Gustafsson this game as Winterburn fires up a deep three way off and a great start by the visitors. That's exactly what you want if you're Caseri, right? A mid-range pull-up jump shot to start the game. That's a really good defensive stop for them. Yeah, and obviously they'll want to do better on the offensive end as an offensive foul called on Hewitt, trying to post up Samuelson. It looked like she just hooked her arm up and underneath, and that's a great job by Carly. It's a really tough score in Kuwich. Yeah, both teams are ready to play defense today, but these refs aren't playing around. They're making sure they control the, the fight in this game because they know it's going to be physical. Yeah, physicality was huge in the second half, in particular last week in Turkey. Both the posts were allowed to really go as Petty again comes off the ball screen. Going to keep the switch on the baseline. Gustafsson had popped. She'll fire up and over. Happy doesn't quite get the roll. And again, you see that adjustment from lines they made in that first leg, extending Megan Gustafsson out to the three-point line and trying to open up the paint as Kuwich goes to work but shuffles her feet and travels. And you can see there, that's one of the role players in Kuwich that Kasiri really wanted to try and get going last week, struggled at times, but she's so impactful. 18 points a game in Euro Cup so far. You say struggle, but she had 16 points, five rebounds and three assists. She was still able to produce for this team, but not at the level they need her to tonight. The pin down screen from Spagmanley broken up, it's Ellenberg Wiley in transition. Petty strips the ball out as she goes for the layup. Ellenberg Wiley looking for the foul and a little bit sloppy from Lions early on. But that's a set we've seen time and time again. And it's about creating angles that now in this second leg as Hamby goes off the baseline out of bounds, beats Fag Bentley, gets the first points of the game. Talking about angles, that's a great job realizing Temi Fag Bentley stepped towards the baseline side of her. She had a catch and drive middle to finish with her left hand. And Petty blows the layup, got a great look down the middle of the lane. And Lyons still scoreless, 80 seconds, uh, minute and a half into this opening quarter. Hamby nearly lost the dribble. Kiewicz going to fire up. Hamby was looking for an offensive rebound as Winterburn was running, but the ball went long to Samuelson. And now Lyons will settle into the half court offense. Petty now again looking for that side pick and roll. Gustafsson going to pop, fire up over Wiley, gets it to go. He's like a replica of the first game. She shot early on in the first leg and was able to be successful. And you see it again today. It's a mismatch problem when you have the likes of Petronite 
guarding you and having to guard the perimeter like that. As a foul called on Holly Winterburn, her first personal. Winterburn got into a bit of foul trouble as well last week. Obviously, it was almost a surprise in the lineup. Back from a little lower body injury, but able to make the game against Skasiewicz. You saw a little bit of rust last week from Holly Winterburn, but she'll be back up and running as Petronite, 15 foot jumper goes. How hard is that to guard when she has the length, she's six foot five, and she has the ability to shoot over and in the mid range. Really hard to guard. As Winterburn off the pit, Gustafsson again popping. Samuelson now going to recycle. She'll step back on the switch, back eyeing Carly Samuelson. But Gustafsson able to pull down the long rebound and a little Spain pick and roll coming from the lines. But Winterburn loses it, gets stripped away by Gunai. And she'll choose not to attack Samuelson and instead reset. Good job by Lions resetting as Kuwitz run off the line. Dishes it inside to Petronite, and that's the bread and butter by the visitors, finding Petronite on the interior. Lovely job, but I think that started with Kuwik. The ability to recognise the mismatch with Megan Gustafson guarding her, driving hard, and a nice little dump of pass for the finish. Winterburn looking for the foul, but referee's happy. Gunai played that straight up legally. The series defence swarming lines, three on the shot clock. Fag Benley left iron, and Hamby's got a chance to cut this down to one possession game on aggregate she's inside samuelson came across and got the hands in it but right now lines have got nothing going in momentum they're all really relying on the three-point shot right now and they they shot well at 44 percent in the first leg but i think they get better looks in the three-point line once they establish themselves inside and ellenberg wiley guarding going up against petty going to go to that mid-range fall away that's one of the shots Ellenberg Wiley is so good at We saw a hit time and time again on Sunday in that huge win against the series. Fag Bentley got a great position on Petronite but had to clear out of the lane, but she'll go to work. Lynn goes to left hand and lays it home to two. I don't mind creating a bit more space in the, in the short corner for Lynn Bentley though. She has the speed to be able to drive by the likes of Petronite. A great job finishing strong with that left hand. As Hamby and Fag Bentley, two veterans going up against each other and Fag Bentley will be called for the little reach in on Dierica Hamby and that's a matchup that's just got power written all over it. It is, it's a really interesting matchup right there and Semi Fag Bentley wasn't happy with the call, she thought she, she was straight up and, but then the refs again are controlling the game early and she brought those hands down. Hamby did a great job of going into that contact and causing that foul. Indeed, and an early change for the line. Shea Petty definitely did struggle in the open couple of minutes. We'll take a breather and in for the lines is Ivana Katsunich. Obviously, Ivana didn't quite make the final 12, but she'll have a chance to go to the Olympics with Serbia the same way Megan Gustafsson is going to go to Spain in the summer. And Ivana's done such a good job for Lions, filling in in the last round against Guernica without Juicy Landrum. She knows her role and she plays it really well. She's a versatile scorer. She gives them eight points a game in the Euro Cup. But again, as you see, you can then move her around at the point guard spot. Same as Holly Winterburn, and it's really hard to guard for 40 minutes. Katanich straight off the pick. Fag Benley got deep position, gives it out instead of going up. Katanich gonna wanted to attack the short closeout, but Hamby did a great job staying in front. Katanich now drives left-handed layup, instant impact off the bench. It's like she can hear us, right? No, great job. Ability to get to the rim, and we've seen that from her time in, time out. Great job of just coming in and being ready to play. And we're tied at seven apiece as Carly Samuelson will pick up the foul. A little bit too close to Kuic there. Obviously, Lions leading by eight on the night. We'll keep you up to date with, of course, the aggregate scoring as we see all through Euro Cup women. And it'll be the visitors from Turkey with the sideline ball. New 14 seconds on the shot clock as Hamby has to pop to avoid the five-second violation, and she'll find Wiley, who'll get a straightaway lane, but blows the layup. And again, that's Lyons playing to the scout. We want to force Ellenberg Wiley to that left hand. And this time, the guard cannot execute as Lyons look to take the first lead of the night. Fag Benley finds Samuelson, who goes straight into that pick and roll. Samuelson from the elbow pull-up. It's something we've seen time and time again from Carly Samuelson. The ability to read the defense and just find the best shot. Exactly that. And when you have the likes of Tommy Fag Benley setting you a ball screen, you can't help off her for much for that long, which gives Carly Samuelson that mid-range jumper. Petronite Katanich gets the ball out of her hands but leaves Gunai wide open. And that's someone you do not want to make that mistake with. 
I say Gunai, 34% from the perimeter in Euro Cup. Yeah, I think Katanich didn't need to double Petra Knight right there on the elbow. As Fag Benley looks to respond but doesn't go. And Ellenberg Wiley looking to push in transition. This is the game we thought we'd see from Kasiri, but again, she can't quite make the layup. Good defense by Fag Benley not to commit the second foul and just make her length difficult to score over. Yeah, she struggled with efficiency in the first leg, but she's got to know those are the right shots for her to take, and the Lions are in trouble if she starts making those today. Fag Benley on the pick and pop, not going to shoot it over Petch Knight. Samuelson rejected the screen to open up and makes no mistake, Carly Samuelson. She's a shooter, right? I think this area started the game going uh, defensively really well, but what have the Lions done? They're just making reads. She's meant to come off their handoff, but she stopped early to shoot the ball because they were trying to fight through it too early. As Petch and I going to travel going at Gufterson, and that's where Lions are really going to be happy if they can keep the big light Petch and I away from the interior keep on him to make it go against people like Megan Gibson and Temi Fag Benley as a change for the Lions. In comes the third leading score in all time Euro Cup history. Kat Snitznina, she'll check in for the Lions and an early sub for the visitors as Petra Knight will take a break and into the game for the first time. Wing 17, Damla Gezgin. So now Kasiri going a little bit smaller, Kyle. And this will be interesting with Temi taking a break. This is the matchup game between the two coaches. It is a matchup game, and the big matchup right now is Hamby and Gustafson. It'll be interesting to see if Gustafson looks to try and attack from the perimeter more with Hamby guarding her. Samuelson going to come off the pin down. Gustafson trying to get deep paint, but instead going to reset again. Another middle pick and roll. Katanich, that little hesitation dribble, making the defense read, but that did not matter as Gezgin was called for the hold away from the ball. And Again, you see their lines just being patient and allowing the read to develop. They are being patient, and we've seen them get into a lot of pick and roll, full screen actions early on in this game to create those advantages. Samuelson looking to get it, but Gustafsson again, an offensive rebound. Lions were huge on the glass in the fourth quarter against Kasiri. It's the three pointers that are allowing those long rebounds to developers. Samuelson, great put pass by Winterburn. Makes no mistake, timeout Kasiri. Yeah, a late call by the ref. I was just going to watch some heat play. Great job by the Lions as we talk about executing their offense. Holly Winterburn comes off that screen. Lovely right hand. Um, to Carly Sanders and he just knocks another three down in this first quarter. And again, it's the patience but the creativity of Holly Winter and I don't think Probably something she gets enough credit for in the game. Everyone thinks she can score. But Holly Winterburn, five assists a game in Euro Cup this year to go with those 12 points. And it's just so crafty. So crafty. And as you said, five assists, but it's because she's a scorer that she can get those assists, right? She has the ability to get downhill, shoot the three. So whenever she does have the ball in her hand, everyone on the defensive end is worried about her, which opens up her teammates for open shots. And obviously for Kasiri now, you've got to regroup. Five is okay. Like, the eight-point lead's not really going to matter, but the last couple of minutes, you've slipped on the defensive end. Yeah, that's exactly it, right? But I think on the other end, the Lions have done a good job countering what this Kasiri team are doing. It's clear they know their scout. It's clear they're trying to pressure the ball a little bit more to disrupt the Lions' offense. The Lions are just taking their time to make reads of all these different screening actions. And they've done a great job so far. Indeed, and as for the visitors, you need to get players going that aren't really dealing to Hamby. Like, what Elmer Wiley's missed two wide open layups, and they're the scores that they need in this game. Wiley will be really frustrated at that. This is the first season in the World Cup that she hasn't scored over 19 points a game. She's a scorer, right? So be missing two pretty open layups to start the game is a straight Looks like Lions are going to switch into a 2-3 zone here. Again, a little bit of chess match between the coaches. Out the timeout plays. Coach Stella Katsudu kind of renowned herself for being great at that. Hamby gets the duck in on Gustafsson. Going to try and go to reverse layup, but no luck. Great defense by the Lions individually there by Gustafsson on that Hamby matchup. And now the Lions will have a chance to extend this lead 
that they built in the last couple of minutes. Nitsina off the flare screen. Going to try and find Gustafsson inside, but Kuic just got a hand to it. And Kasiri able to pull down the rebound, but nearly throw it away. And Katz Nitsina jumping into the passing lane. Yeah, there's been a couple of steals so far in this first half on the, on the Lions' offensive end. Because, as we talk about, a bit more ball pressure and reading those passes. They're open off these screens, but a great job on the ball by these Kasiri defenders. Ellenberg Wiley going to stop and pop from three as lines went under the ball screen and Megan Gustafson able to pull down the defensive rebound. So we said Wiley's had some struggle from the perimeter this year, 24%, but she's normally a 30, 35% three-point shooter as Lions again trying to attack in that middle pick and roll. Winterburn looking for Gustafson. Wiley does a great job getting off the switch there and allowing Kasiri to reset and Megan Gustafson a little bit too quick with her feet before she put the ball on the deck, but that's a great high level of switch by Wiley. No, she's got to switch with that triple switch to get off the post. Yeah, to make that a little simpler for, for the viewers, we're talking how Wiley ended up being on Megan Gustafson after the ball screen, but she really doesn't want to be down low battling with the likes of Gustafson. She found a way to quickly switch back with Hamby before the Lions were able to pass it inside. As Fag Benley checks back in as Megan Gustafson takes a great snit scene, a great job on the closeout on Kuwich. Kuwich to the left hand, in and out. And again, the visitors struggling on the interior. As we've got 90 seconds to go in this opening quarter. Visitors now scoreless over the last three minutes as Katanich driving on the baseline and Samuelson miscommunication. She was trying to lift up, but you really need on that baseline drive someone in that corner. You do, yeah. You have to be able to drift down for that pass after the baseline drive. But it's interesting today. There seems to be some nerves to the, um, with this game being such an important part of the Euro Cup um, season for both teams. And it's a lot lower scorer scoring game than it was in the first quarter of the first leg. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how both teams settle as the game continues. Yeah, 56 points in the opening quarter last week in Turkey as Kuic again off the ball screen. Katanic late on the closeout, having helped on that stunt and recover, but no good again for the visitors as Abby Myers had checked in during that break. Abby Myers, the rookie out of Princeton, as Katanic will find Fag Benley in the post, but Dierica Hamby coming through the back. She'll commit her first personal foul, third team foul on the visitors. And it's really hard for Hamby today because not only does she have to deal with one elite post player, but she has to deal with two back to back, one after the other, after they've had breaks on the bench. She's done a great job so far, but that's a foul. Definitely too much pushing on the back. Samuelson thought about the three, but again, Lions going to be able to move the ball. Katanich fakes out Wiley, able to step into the foul line jump shot but didn't quite get to go. Abby Myers nearly coming down with the offensive rebound, but the visitors will have a good chance here to push for a two for one if they want with Gunai. Hamby's gonna line up the three back iron and the visitors do indeed get that two for one, but can't get the score on the first end. And they've really struggled to score in the last four minutes or so in this quarter as Katanich calls out the set. It's Abby Myers in the high post. Again, it looks like some more Spain pick and roll for the Lions. Katanich getting all the way to the rim, banks it off the glass. Lions up by seven, and Lions have got a foul to give here in the final eight seconds, and there it is by Ivana Katanich. Such a smart play. Really smart, and you can see Coach Stella coming further out of her box to let her team know we've got that foul to give right there. Great execution on the offensive end, that Spanish pick and roll, which is a high pick and roll, going left for Katanic and a great finish. And that's the difference of the game right now, is points in the paint being out of finish. Kasseri unable to do that, as we see Shanice Beckford Norton and Savannah Wilkinson come in for the first time. Indeed, Beckford Norton and Wilkinson, and again, smart coaching. Both players that have got one personal foul out of the game don't want to risk a second in the final five seconds, but we fully expect this ball to go to Hamby. She really dominated Savannah Wilkinson in that matchup last week, but Wilkinson gets the block. Samuelson from half court to beat the buzzer doesn't quite get it to go. And that'll end the first quarter here at the Copper Box Arena. London line 17, Melakai Kasiri 10. The Lions are lead by 15 on aggregate, and after a slow start, You'd almost say it's a perfect quarter by the Lions.
almost the perfect quarter indeed. I think what really helped was after the first time out, they settled into their offense. They were able to not just shoot threes, but also shoot a high percentage, but they were finding ways to get to the mid-range and to get inside the paint for some easy layups. Yeah, Lions, three of eight from the perimeter in the opening quarter, seven two-point touch, but a lot of them came later on in that quarter. And again, Lions doing a good job on the offensive glass, really limiting the rebounds for Melikai Kaziri, zero offensive rebounds. One, one thing I think the Lions need to focus on right now is limiting their turnovers. They have five already. And although they've done a good job so far in transition defense, this Kaziri team are able to light it up when they get to go down the hill fast. Yeah, and again, the visitors, one or two from the line, but it's that four, 14 field goal attempts. And They've created good looks, it's now just about finishing around the rim. Yeah, they're going to want some of those bunnies back. They did a really good job with field goal percentage in the first leg. They shot a 50%. Again, they tied the line and points in the paint for 28. So they need to be able to finish those if they want to make this aggregate score closer. Indeed. And, oh, we talked about free throws being important. Just to sum that up in the stat. Melakai Kasiri going into Euro Cup quarterfinals with the number one overall team in free throw percentage in terms of attempts at the line. And lines in the last four quarters now limited to just six. That's a huge reason why they were successful in the first leg. It's because they stopped looking at those easy points from the free throw line. They're, they've got a lot of firepower that can drive and create fouls. So Lyons did a good job of staying in front without um, picking up fouls early, especially. And obviously, we talked about Savannah Wilkinson there. And just to summarise, what a odd night it was for Savannah. She's been a rock this Lions team off the bench all year, but only five minutes of court time last week. But she was a minus 13 and plus minus. Yeah, I and mean, you won't see that very often from Savannah Wilkinson. As you see, Coach Della believes in her and has her out here to start the second quarter because she's really versatile in her position. She's a little smaller in the forward, but she has the ability to pull up from the mid-range. And again, the Lions did a great job with offensive rebounds. She can be a part of that too. As Shale Gunai couldn't connect on the three to start the quarter. Abby Myers trying to respond, gets Hamby in the air and gets clattered. But if anything, that's a huge win for Lions, because that's the second personal on the Erica Hamby. Game changer right there. You have to be able to get their starters in foul trouble if you want to create a bigger lead for this Lions team. And all Myers did there was a little hesitation. All she did was look at the basket. That was enough to make Hamby jump. She did the right thing by trying to drive by, by her after that. Yeah, and Hamby, again, you've got to know the scout. Abby Myers can shoot the free, but she's only shooting at 21% in Euro Cup. However, you don't want to leave that person open. That's Nick Cena. Yeah, it's a shame because this Kaseri team came out really well in their scout defensively, I thought, to start the game. But you cannot leave the likes of Katsutsina. As you said, third all-time scorer in the Euro Cup. And their bread and butter is from the three-point line. 38% on the season. Is Hamby going to face up against Wilkinson? Winterburn with such a deep drop. Hamby picks it up, steps through, lays it home. It didn't matter what. Holly Winterburn did, Hamby wanted that one-on-one -on -one matchup with Wilkinson. The control, the patience, dribble and be able to step through for that nice little leg. As Winterburn gets in the lane, kicks to Myers, she will line up the corner three, back iron, and Hamby with the rebound, and Kasiri have a chance to run, Lines struggling to get bodies back beneath Ellenberg-Wiley to Geskin, and now Hamby again isolated on Wilkinson, going to slowly back it down, Ellenberg trying to cut, but Kind of caught it on the elbow in an awkward spot. Geskin's going to line up the three back iron. And Snitsina with the tip of rebound. And Shea Petty will slow it up for Lions. And something we kind of noticed in this tie is Lions being a little bit more methodical in the half court. But that's fine when you've got the number one overall half court offense in Euro Cup women, as the London Lions do, as Gunai called for the bump on Petty. Number seven, Gunai. We talk about bench production, I think the Lions have done a good job so far, been able to rotate players in and not see any dip in their play. Everyone's come out and is able to be productive. And into the game for the first time for Kasiri, wearing number four, Fatmana Karakaz. Karakaz averaging 13 minutes a game in the Euro Cup, but just six minutes yes, uh, last week as Kasiri dropped down their rotation as Ellenberg Wiley gets called for the arm check on Petty, who's aggressive going downhill. 
She does that really well. She has the ability to get downhill with speed, and she just caused that foul just from being so aggressive to the paint. Shay Petty yet to shoot a free throw with the London Lions, oh, but obviously her only fifth game total, three in the league, and then obviously the Euro Cup opener last week in Turkey, and she's able to connect on the first as Lions starting to slowly drag this lead out, and it's not quite panic stations yet for Melakai Kasiri, but it's getting close with the lead at 10-18 on Akadam. It is, they have to be able to close this gap really quickly, but at the same time, they have scorers to do it, and the likes of Hamby, Wiley, Kuic, Petra Knight, they have the ability to to close in this gap really quickly, which we saw in the first game. Lions nearly came up with the ball. Good deflection by Myers as the drive from Caracas again caught under the rim, just couldn't quite get an angle to finish. And Winterburn's going to look to go in transition, but loses the ball off the back of her feet. That is the sixth turnover for the Lions, and they'll be called for the Tran foul. Yeah, second turnover there for Holly Winterburn. Just doing it maybe a little bit too much with the guards all over her, pressuring her. But Lions need the ball in her hands so she can produce for them. As Snitsina will be called for the personal foul. First team foul on the London Lions in this opening quarter. First on Snitsina. As Kasi will have the ball from the sideline. And it'll be Ellenberg Wiley to inbound. This Kasiri team really needs to up their efficiency from the three-point line and within. They're one for seven from the three right now and only 29% from the field. Make that one of eight as Kuic can't connect on the straight to way three. And to be fair to Kasiri, they shot the ball well at home last week, made 10 on in that opening leg as Snitsina finds Wilkinson who cut underneath on Ellenberg Wiley and she's able to lay it home for two and that will be a real confidence boost for Savannah Wilkinson. Yes, it definitely will be. Great cut there, great vision by Snitsina and a bullet pass to Wilkinson but that's exactly what she can bring. And Ellenberg Wiley again blows the layup, that's her third miss at the rim as Petty straight away three in and out and Hamby pulls down the rebound but that really felt like not quite a dagger, but it would have felt like a real momentum shift as Myers takes the charge. Great positioning. Great job by Myers, establishing her position. Both feet on the ground, got hit by Wiley. Good job being able to fall on time as well. And a bit of pocket change as well. For those of you that haven't joined us early in the year, if Lions drew a charge, it's five pounds added to the team fund for every charge draw. So you always see Lions players loving the defensive effort as Melakai Kasiri will use their second time out of the half. And really for the visitors, it is that offensive efficiency. They came in to this two-legged affair with the sixth best half-court offense in Euro Cup women. And right now they've got two points in the last eight, nearly eight minutes. Yeah, and, and the crazy thing is, the half court they're good, but in transition they, they were even better in the first leg. They're able to get 15 fast break points compared to Lions 10. They're able to get 13 points from turnovers from eight steals, and they're able to get to the free throw line and shoot 76%. I just haven't seen them be as aggressive yet in this game, and they really need to up their points in their paint and their ability to push the ball. Yeah, coming in, Malakai Kasiri averaged 30.4 points per game in the paint. They're stuck at six, but it's a combination of Lions defense has definitely stepped up, but you've also blown legs from your experienced players on the roster. And that's, that's the game right there. They've had some easy looks around the rim, and in a game as important as this, they have to be able to make those legs because they won't get that many um, from the Lions' defense. So I, that, for their sake, they hope they can start making this as they come out in a full-court press. Yeah, and again, we, this is what we maybe thought might happen in the first quarter. Lions had a little bit of issues breaking the press and getting good looks out of it, but Samuelson finds Winterburn in the corner. Great hook pass, Winterburn, Snitsina decides to put the ball on the deck. Gufterson, pick and pop from three, gets it to go. Making Gufterson off the bench, making an impact. Amazing execution by the Lions right there. And we spoke about Gufterson being able to hit that three. She was 50%, four for eight in the last game. 
And she's just showing the versatility again. The lefty has range. As Nitsina was trying to front Hamby. And if anything, that's another perfect foul for the Lions. With Nitsina being late, that was going to be a wide open layup. She's a veteran. As the veteran comes out, she deserves a little bit of time on the bench, but Temi Fekbendi replacing her, but a great job there by Carlin before the shot attempt. Yeah, and Merv Ari wearing six in for the visitors did not play in the first leg, but this is where Kasiri are probably happiest. They have the number one offense in Euro Cup women from the baseline out of bounds, but that doesn't help when you draw an offensive foul. Another turnover for this Kasiri team. Everything they do well has started to crumble early from this game. They need to get back to what they do and to their bread and butter, which is the baseline out of bounds, which is half court possessions. Do we get revert do we get a bonus on commentators curse for talking about someone doing well and then they do something negative? It's normally free throws, but that's a positive for Lions. It is a positive for Lions. Absolutely. As Kasiri have jumped into a 2-3 zone for the first time, we saw a lot of that in the second quarter of the opening game in Turkey. We see what lines have got drawn up as Samuelson in the corner, three on the shot clock. Gustafsson face up, going to put it onto the left hook, front iron, and Lions again didn't quite execute there and forced a look. But this is the end where the visitors have to get it going as Hamby gets the post, so it's going to drive baseline on Gustafsson, stuck behind the rim, but able to go up and through Gustafsson, and lays it home, and coach Stella Koltzadu will want to talk it over with a side leading by 30. Yeah, quick timeout by coach right there. She doesn't want any momentum for this Kasseri team, especially for the likes of Hamby. Great job by her to the left. Ability to use her body, to use her body to get to the rim. It's great, she jumped into the Megan Gustafsson. And we're getting with a finish in the left hand. That's a tough finish by Andy right there. Yeah, and Lions just went on an 18-2 run over nine and a half minutes. So, Kasiri now reset, but now you've got to attack the game. Exactly, you have to attack, but it starts by getting stopped. They've got steals in the last game. They were able to shot the Lions early in this game to be able to get live ball turnovers, but we haven't seen that so much later on so far. They have to get the ball back in their hands to push pace, and they have to make layups. And obviously we saw Hamby there, but now we're really looking at the Euro Cup player of the month for January in with James Petronite to be able to really accelerate the interior offense. Yes, exactly. Petronite, that's what she does. She's got length to her. She has the ability to finish layups. She can hit the mid-range jump shot on the other end. We saw Megan Gustafson miss that last floater was because of the length of Petronite really disrupted Megan's vision and ability to finish with her left hand. Yeah, the 6'5 Lithuanian super experienced national team player as well made her debut in 2007 in Euroleague women and she's been a staple for the Lithuanian national team averaging 15 and 8 in the last Euro qualifiers as Petty drives into the paint will get Petronite out but Kasiri able to recover five on the shot clock as Samuelson Petty Gustafsson open in the corner, Winterman will fake the pass, reset her feet. I thought she was going to bank it open for a second, but a little bit short by Holly Winterman. And again, this zone has just disrupted Lions rhythm. It is. Uh, this Kasiri team has done a really good job of moving in their zone, forcing Lions to take time off that shot clock and have to heave up a last second shot by Winterburn. As a drive inside, Petty called for the foul. Looked like the referees were going to let it go. But Shea Petty called for the late whistle. <laughs> Head coach of Malachi Kaziri, Emra Ozare, really an animated coach. We've seen that all through the tournament. And glad he finally got the calling. Apologise to the referees for being a little bit too eager on the asking for it. Yeah, he was very eager there. He was waiting on that call. He saw the swipe down by Petty. But that's more like it for this Kaziri team. I think that could have been an AM1. If, I, if I'm really pushing it for them. And this is their identity, getting to the rim, having high percent, percentage of looks, and getting to the free throw line where they can shoot at an efficient rate. Indeed, it's the first. And the second is good by Gunai. And Kasiri now with back-to-back -back scores. And they trail by 11 on the night, 19 on aggregate in this Euro Cup women's quarter-final.
The winner will take on TTT Riga or Rhea Venice is Gustafsson wide open in the high post and she'll make no mistake from 15 foot. We've already seen Gustafsson score at all three levels around the rim, the mid-range dump shot and then behind the three-point arc. What a As we see an, another layup ability getting to the rim and finally finishing for this Kasseri team. Yeah, quick four points in a row by Gunai. He's only averaging seven points a game in the Euro Cup. She's already now on that season average in the first half as Winterburn off the double screen. Kasiri still working this zone. Samuelson, though, will open in the corner. Makes no mistake. Who you don't want shooting the three in the 2-3 zone. Yes, you're probably in a zone to four shots, but you have to be able to get out to the corner. Yeah, with someone like Katanich on the floor for lines, who, yes, can make the three, but that's the person you want to give it up to is Gunai. Again, going to drive, left-handed layup goes. I love the aggressive nature of Gunai in this game. She said, OK, um, Wiley struggled a little bit from the field right now. Let me pick up some slack. Let me help this team out by being productive and getting to the rim at high rate. As Fag Bentley again looking for the ball on the post, it was Gustafsson rolling in to it, and she was triple teamed. Good luck knowing who that foul was on because there was three players and I think any of them could have been called for it. Yeah, she creates so much havoc in the key. Three of them had to go in and it still wasn't enough. They had to foul her. Great job of recognising that in the zone and being able to flash towards the middle. If you're playing against a zone on offense, the best thing to do is get the ball in the middle. It breaks down the zone and you're able to either get something inside or a wide open three. Foul was on Gunai, her second personal foul, and with Kasiri in the penalty, it sends Megan Gustafsson to the line. Megan struggled by her standards, just three of seven so far in Euro Cup, but last year in the WNBA for the Phoenix Mercury shot, 81%, and she makes both. As you see, Shanice Beckford-Norton and Maya Price on the bench there for the Lions. Beck for Norton, obviously, has had a terrific season. It's good night again, trying to go downhill, but loose the handle, but it's the right read. It is, and she's had success the last few times being aggressive. I think she forced that one a little bit too much, but the handle just slipped away from her. But I really like this, this play by her. I really like that she's come out and just said, this is a huge game, and I need to be one of the players that can force it inside the paint. Terrific hands by Carly Samuelson to keep the ball going out of bounds. It looked like Lions were going to have a little bit of a sloppy turnover, but they can reset. Again, Gustafsson setting the screen and rolling into the high post. She'll face up, this time back iron, and the rebound out to Kuric. And she'll, Kasiri out and trying to push in transition. Airy to Petronite. Terrific dump off pass to the cutting Airy. And again, Lions will talk over. But what a play by the 6-5 big from Lithuania. I love that by Petrovic right there. I think she did a really good job of recognising the double and not panicking. She got the ball out of her hands quickly to create that advantage and a great cut right there. That's exactly how this Sari team are going to get back into this game. Indeed, and for Lions again, it's taking these moments to regroup the lines. You're up 12 on 20 in anger. You can't let this momentum slip going into half-time. Absolutely you can't. You know this Kasseri team can come back and make this a game as they did in the first leg. So they have to be able to stay really competitive, stay strong in what they're trying to do on both ends of the floor so they can be successful. And right now it's the zone offense causing some issues, but you can see the game plan. You want to make your just a sense and a high pick and rolling into the high post and then letting her be a decision maker. Exactly, and you've seen a couple of possessions, they've looked at different things, they've had kick out threes for Carly Sanderson in the corner, they've had flashes by Megan Gutterson who has ability to hit the mid-range and seal. I think they're going to look for a few more offensive rebounds on that end if the Spaceri team stay in that 2-3 zone. Indeed, and obviously Carly Samuelson, you talk about it, a leading scorer in this game, 11 points to go with three rebounds. And again, that's just carrying on what we saw last week, so she has 36 points in the top. What makes her so impressive is she never panics or rushes, she just takes her time to make reads. She's a great player to come off any kind of screen, on or off the ball, because she has has the understanding to know that they can't stop everything and she finds ways to be a scorer regardless of how she's guarded. Lions in the horn set, this time trying to get Gufterson on a duck in against Petronite, but the ball tipped out of bounds. The Lions will have 
the ball on the baseline out of bounds. Nine seconds to work with on the shot clock. And it'll be Carly Samuelson to trigger the inbound. Melakai Kasiri still playing in this 2-3 zone as Winterburn able to discompopulate it with Airy. So Petronite's going to have to come out and cover Gufterson. Winterburn finds her and Megan Gufterson doesn't quite connect this time. But again, you can see that as soon as she realises Petronite's on her, sprints the room and spaces the floor as Kasiri again trying to attack downhill with Gunai. This time kick out to Kuwitz. Winterburn got a hand in the passing lane to slow it up. And Kuwic stepped back over Winterburn, but doesn't quite go. And Kuwic really struggling tonight. 0 of 4 now from the floor as we enter the final two minutes of this half. Winterburn, corner three short. And again, this zone has just kind of shifted the momentum again and lines settling into some jump shots a little bit earlier in the clock, but it's how do you get the post touches that the coaching staff will be looking at as Petronite ducks in on Gufterson. She rolls over that right shoulder and will get to the line. And you can see why this Kasiri team has sipped over on the Euro Cup for half court scoring. Because once they're able to establish their half court game and, and their plays and sets and take their time to read mismatches, they do a really good job. And again, they're back to the line, which you can get easy points to close in this gap. Yeah, and this is interesting that Kasiri have kind of gone to this matchup because going in statistically, you think Petronite, 6 5, she's a post up player, but that's not her game. She scores more, a little bit mid range, but off the cuts. And instead, she's really strong from the poster, but times where she's been really aggressive, gone to that. And these were, if she's able to convert, this would be the first time all season she scored in the post, going over the right shoulder. So Megan Justin did a great job of following the scout, but instead bailed her out and put her on the line, where normally she is elite as she goes 0 of 2. But Petronite going in was 88% from the line. Commentator's curse. Indeed. For Kasiri, they're the points you need. You've got four or five missed layups by key people, and now you're missing three throws, but Tommy Fabani will not miss layups. Again, being in a 2-3 zone against the likes of Megan Gutterson and Tommy Fagbenley in the interior is really hard. The high-low game, they've just got it on point. As the visitors again able to convert, Gunai having a huge breakout game. Turkish player who got brought up in the Kasiri system. She's in a third spell at the club. She moves into double figures with 11 points personal. Really good job of continuing to stay aggressive. A lovely reverse right there. And they're used to giving her these minutes. She averages over 27 minutes a game for them. So she's expected to do a lot. As Petronite stripped by Katanich, finds Fag Benley, who will go to reverse leg. Too much on it for Temi Fag Benley. And now Kasiri will have a chance to press, but Abby Myers will blow it up with a foul. However, lines in the penalty, so that'll be two shots for the visitors. It's exactly what you don't want these visitors to be, is on the free throw line right there. Not a bad foul in transition by Katanic, but you're sending them to the line, which they can then closen up this gap. Indeed, a second personal on Abby Myers, as Temi Fagbenny will take a great replaced by Kat Snitsina. And Petronite will come out for the visitors with number 17, Damla Gezgin checking back into the ball game as Merv Ari will head to the line. Ari is 70% free throw shooter on the season. They actually decided to keep Petronite out with that Temi Fag Benley sub. I think they want to find more mismatches inside with the smaller lineup from the Lions. Uh, indeed, as Ari. Are you Former junior national team Turkish player through 20, through 16s, 18s and 20s, but in a debut season in Europe. Had a big role for Kasiri through the tournament. 19 minutes a game as Gustafsson gets the ball in the post. Will kick out to Petronite and Katanic will call for a reset and we'll see what Lions have got low in the shot clock as Samuelson runs the baseline. Snitsina, elbow jump and gets it to go. And it put Gezkin in a really difficult position having Samuelson in the corner. But the visitors will try and close out this half as they lead trail by 20 on aggregate, 12 on the night. Hamby on Snitsin, a great pass by Petronite, goes in, gets the contact, no call. And that will do from the Copper Box Arena. Great defensive possession from the Lions to finish. And a really dominant first half by the hosts. Yeah, great job not fouling in the end right there. And 
We saw as the game continued to go on, they found their way into scoring. It started a little slow, but they were able to use whatever defenses the Kasiri team threw at them to execute their offense. I think they've done a great job against that zone, especially in the high post looks, being able to make mid-range jump shots and everyone starting to light up for this Lions team. And obviously Lions perimeter, a little bit low, but great look, six of 17. That's where Kasiri really struggled, one of nine on the perimeter. And again, Lions doing a terrific job on the glass. 19 rebounds to 13, but again, Malakai Kasiri, zero offensive rebounds in that first half. Yeah, they need to start crashing the boards. I think Hamby can be really effective there. The, on the other hand, I think defensively they've gotten deflections. They've had four steals. I think there's a couple possessions they wish they grabbed the ball, which the Lions were able to come up with, but they need to be able to get second chance possessions on the offensive end. Indeed, as you see on your screen, some of the f highlights for the first half, and really for the visitors, it was the first four or five minutes of the game where they really looked like they came out with a load of energy. They did. They were playing the right way. Defensively, they looked like they were causing issues for this Lions team early. But unfortunately, they just missed some bunnies, especially on the inside, which, kind of, uh, which caused them to have to play a lot more transition defense than they would have wanted to. Indeed, and there you saw Ivana Katanic, an impact off the bench. Shea Petty kind of struggled by her standards early on, but Katanic made a couple of huge plays to get into the lane early off the middle pick and roll. Yeah, I think the bench production's been much better for this Lions team today. Savannah Wilkinson's come in and been great for them. Ivana Katanic came in at the point guard position, was able to run things for them. And again, Katanic's seen her, the ultimate experienced veteran, was able to come in and do what she does, shoot the ball, be able to execute great passes and just be a leader. On the floor for Indeed, and that is the half time score on the screen. London Lions 38 20, uh, Malachi Kasiri 26. And welcome back inside the Copper Box. A really vibrant atmosphere, Kyla, where London Lions lead at the half, and the half the host will be delighted with. They will definitely be delighted with that, and there's so much more to come for both teams. It's not over yet. Yeah, and we'll be joining in about seven minutes' time for the second half, and we'll leave you with some information about the new London Lions Foundation. London's relentless, just when it comes to its energy and everything about it. There's space for everyone if you just know how to carve out a space for yourself. Like, if you can't find a space, make it. London basketball is fast, aggressive, in your face. Players in London do not back down from anyone. When I think of playing in London, I think of defence. Like, everyone's ready to get in your shorts. You're going to have a tough time scoring in London. I think London is a perfect place for basketball because, you know, London is multicultural. We've got everyone here from walks of life. It is such a great outlet that allows people to just be themselves. Basketball embraces everything about anyone and everyone. Most people in London, they kind of get into basketball through the cultural aspects of it as opposed to the actual game itself. London's not a city made for outdoor basketball 365 days of the year, so once you're able to overcome those barriers, I think it just gives you a sense of belonging and ownership over the game as well. It's not just something that's been imported, but it's something that we've been able to create for ourselves. Basketball is a function of the community. It's about thousands of people willing to give up their time and energy, passion and hours to improve the game. I've always kind of been that tall person with a strong presence, but not always had a strong voice. For me personally, basketball has built my character. Basketball has actually given me life. I didn't grow up in the nicest part of London and I was challenged with a lot of stuff, so basketball saved me. You're talking about a city of 8 million people. It's one of the greatest cities in the world. It's no secret that there is so much potential for basketball in London. There's so much talent, so much latent talent, so much untapped talent. Slowly but surely, we're seeing progress on every front, and hopefully that will continue for years to come. With London Basketball, there's no box for it. There's no rules, there's no look this way or act this way. Everyone brings their own flavor. There's always a determination and a drive to just play. Londoners, we're stubborn. We always have something to prove. I feel like the basketball world is about to see something great in London. It's already taken off.
right back after injury. So Guernica give themselves a good account as Indeen. Great ball movement by the line. Smith Cena finds Beck for Norton. She'll shoot over Dodson. String music. Shanice Beck for Norton. Her seventh point of the game. Winterberg now in the front court. Oh, you gotta be kidding me on that pass. Beautiful, just put the goggles up. She'll start knocking those down as we've seen earlier in the game. As Samuelson, hoop and harm, she'll have a chance for the three point play. get the and one. Yeah, this is a nice drive baseline and puts her in a spin cycle. Block by Beck Bentley, who did not give up on the plane. And good evening and welcome back to the Olympic Park here at the Copper Box Arena. Michael Hanson Morris, Kyla Nelson with you as the halftime score. London Lions 38, Melakai Kasiri 26. London Lions lead by 20 on aggregate. And Kyla, a dominant half by Lions, but they've got some issues to fix in the paint. Issues in the paint and they need to, they're, they're enjoying the pace right now, right? Their issues in the paint, they did a really good job in the first leg to be able to get the ball inside. I think they're starting to do more in the second quarter of the pick and roll, of the post up, of executing offense from the 2-3 zone. I think they're starting to realize they don't have to shoot so many threes to be effective. Yeah, and there on your screen, someone that played a big impact for Lions in that first half, Katznit Sino, the veteran off the bench. Eight points, oh sorry, only five points personal, but two rebounds, two assists. But the plus minus kind of plus 13 in just eight minutes of action. 100% from the field, and she just makes this team better. That's what the plus minus means, right? When she's in the floor, when she's on the floor, my apologies, they have a plus 13 points over Kasiri. Just shows her ability to affect the game from only shooting two shots. Yeah, and indeed, you see the leading score at the half Carly Samuelson, 11 points for Carly to go with six rebounds as well. And obviously, for the visitors, talked about it all first half, but she needs mentioning Gunai season high in Euro Cup in the first half alone. First half, she's four from six on the field. Great efficiency. She averages only six field goals a game. She's already passed that uh, in this half of basketball. She's stepping up for this Kasiri team when they need her. Indeed, Gunai 11 points personal. Lines have done a really good job on Kuit and Ellenberg Wiley. They are combined scoreless on 0 of 10 shooting. And that's your second and third leading score if you're Melakai Kasiri. 
who need almost a miracle in this second half. They do, they need to push this pace. This Lions team are happy to play half-court basketball with them because right now they're up in aggregate. On the other hand, this Kasiri team need to start getting stops in the defensive end so they can push the pace, go downhill, get to the free throw line and make this deficit a little bit closer going into the fourth quarter. Yeah, so we've got a little technical issue here in the copper box. Lions will start with Petty, Winterburn, Gustafsson, Fag Benley and Carly Samuelson for head coach Stella Kotsudu. And as for the visitors, it's their starting five. Kuwich, Ellenberg Wiley, Dierica Hamby, Petronite, and Gunai. As lines start, probably thinking it was a zone. That kind of looks like a little zone offense, but what they get is Fag Benley getting her own miss and laying it home for two. She's doing exactly what she did in the first leg. She had a double double with 15 points, 10 rebounds. Five of them offensive, and she started this half as she continues to go on in this season. And that is be a beast on the board. Yeah, it's six points personal for Fag Benley as the ball tipped out of bounds, last touched by Gunai. So it'll be a Lions possession, a great start to the second half for Lions. As they look to extend this 22 point lead on Agra as they're closing in on a potential Euro Cup semi-final. As they continue to make history here at the Copper Box and across British basketball, both men's and women's, as Fag Benley throws it away to Ellenberg Wiley. This is where we'd expect the guard to get going in transition, and Petty called for the reach in. That'll be her second personal foul. And I think that's where this Turkish team are best, is when they play one-on-one -on -one defense and don't overhelp. If you overhelp with the Lions, they're able to pick you apart with the passes. If you stay in front and force passes like that from Temi Fag Benley, you can come back into this game. Winterburn thought she got the backcourt violation, but she indeed touched it as Hamby gets it knocked loose by Fag Benley. And again, for those of you that may be a little bit late joining us, Kasiri, this is where their bread and butter is. They are the best team in Euro Cup not just remaining in the entire competition from baseline out of bounds, 1.23 points per possession. And for the second time in a row, Kyla Nelson, we get the commentator's curse reverse. No, that's all your fault right there. I'm not taking any credit for that. But I must say, the Lions will know that fact going into this game. They know how good this Kasseri team are when they get the ball from the baseline out of bounds. So they will have practiced a lot, scouted different plays that they run, and they've done a great job of executing so far defensively. Yeah, and obviously you've got to give some credit to head coach Stella Katsudu, but her coaching staff have been terrific as well. Matt Pick and Krumesh Patel both coming across from the Leicester Riders last season, and we know Matt and Krumesh both love to delve into details, as Stella does as, as an ex-player, as well as Lions. Off the baseline, out of bounds, give and go to Petty, and that's how you execute. That is exactly how you execute from the baseline out of bounds right there. Great job of getting it in safely and a nice little touch pass by Megan Gustafson to find Petty down low. Shea Petty, second home field goal at the Copper Box as Ellenberg Wiley makes a long two, her first bucket of the day, having dropped 34 on Sunday against Galatasaray. Yeah, she'll be really happy to see that one go in. And the problem for Lyons is now she's going to feel like she wants to get on the rhythm. She hits one, her confidence shoots back up, and she's going to want to be aggressive for the rest of this game. Indeed, and if you are going to produce a comeback of epic proportions, you're going to need your best players to score. And if Ellenberg Wiley can get going, she can be so dangerous. 21 points a game domestically in a really tough Turkish league. We see multiple Turkish sides, both in the Euro League women and Euro Cup quarterfinals, as Winterburn to Gustafsson on the inside. That's where Ellenberg Wiley is in great form. <laughs> the defensive end in with the post up of Megan Gustafsson. Nice lob there. Perfect timing and pass for her to finish over the smaller defender. Hamby. Finds Gunai. Gunai thought about the three. Winterburn trying to go under the screen and she'll get penalised for running into the screener of Hamby. And Gunai continues her breakout game. 14 points personal. Second made three of the night for the Turkish player in the third spell here with Melakai Kasiri as Pedi off the ball screen. Fag Benli high low again to Gustafsson. Gets the contact off balance as coach Stella Katsudu and the Lions wanted a call. And a reaching foul by Samuelson to blow up transition. Gunai, I've just been so impressed with her. She's putting this team on her back. She realized a lot of her teammates have been heavily scouted and heavily defended, so it's her chance to be able to create things for them. Yeah, and she's gone away from the scout too. She's someone that coming in was prominently catch and shoot 
but then a lot of middle pick and roll, and that's not oh, where she's had so success bad. tonight. But there she gets called for the offensive foul for the hook on Holly Winterburn. Yeah, that's a good read and call by the referee right there to recognize that hook on Winterburn. But you can't knock the aggressiveness from Gunai to there. As it looks like the visitors are going to go back into this 2-3 zone. So Lions again lining up with this 4 high that caused some issues with Winterburn and Samuelson kind of splitting through as Gustafsson inside on Petronite gets it to go. And Megan Gustafsson continues where she left off last week. She's up to 14 points personal. Lovely job and control to be able to pivot and finish that. But this Lions team, is obvious they've been practicing their half-court zone offense throughout the week because they've done a great job in executing. And if you're playing a zone, you do not want points in the paint. As the steal from Petty and Lions were pushing in transition, but Gunai will be pulled for the blocking foul. And that's the issue. Your best player on the night's now just picked up foul number four, just three minutes into this second half. Yeah, that's really tough for someone that you're getting production from today that has to go and sit on the bench for quite a while now, probably. But you're hoping the likes of other players, such as Ari, who just came in, can be able to produce something for this team. As Spain pick and roll again for the Lions, Petty kept Kuwait on the hip and laid it home for two. Like you just said, she kept her on her side. And what she did, she changed the pace of her layup steps just to mess with her. As Kuwait on the give and go pulls up from the foul line and she gets herself off the board. The Romanian international with a first field goal of the game. But for the visitors, still trailing by 15, 23 on aggregate as Samuelson. It's been a little bit quiet in the last 10, 12 minutes of game action, having had a really hot start. Tries to go to work. Winterburn in the corner, going to drive in, find Megan Gustafsson, 15-foot jumper, string of music. And there's no panic when there's three seconds left on the shot clock for this Lions team. They're waiting to develop the best shot for them in their offense. And when Megan Gustafsson is hitting at a rate she's hitting shots today, really hard to guard. As Merv Ari drives into the paint, Gustafsson kind of slipped. And that will send Merv Ari to the line for the second time this afternoon. That'll be second personal on Megan. Third team foul on the Lions as Hope head coach Stella Katsudu. Trio of changes into the game comes Abby Myers, Ivana Katanich, and Kat Snitsina. And in fact, Melakai Kasiri gonna use this opportunity to talk it over. And Kyla, for you, a decent second half. You've got a little bit of momentum, but now it's a case of you've got to slow down the person doing damage in Megan Gustafson. You do, and you're trying to do that in a live setting. She's done a great job of scoring at all points and on the floor. Really hard when you have teammates such as Holly Winterburn, Temi Fag Benley, Kat Sassina, that can find her in her rhythm. So I think our teammates done a great job of giving her the ball, and Megan Gustafson is 6 of 11 right now from the field, and 16 points personal coming into the third quarter. Yeah, and we said one of the things you touched upon in the pregame was the points in the paint last week were tied, 28 apiece. Tonight, Lions have 26 already. And that's the game right there. The Lions are really forcing it in. But a lot of it's coming from the 2-3 zone of Kasseri. They can't give up interior position if they're in a zone. The whole point of a zone is to force them into exterior shooting because this Kasseri team needs to get rebounds so they can push the pace. They still only, they only have four fast break points, which is really where they're struggling. They need to start passing the ball up ahead, getting it faster. Someone who's scoring a ball at a fast rate right there is Meg Gustin. And again, as you see her stats, really good job by her. It takes a well-deserved break. Yeah, and where it's really interesting, you say Malachi Kasiri only four points. London Lions have zero. Zero fast break points, yet 26 points in the paint. And that feels so uncatched of Lions, but they've gone in and go, we're up, we can be more methodical. It's that, and it's also both teams have played each other before. They know their identity is to run the ball. So of course you're going to practice and develop some transition defense to be able to stop that. But again, you're right. This Lions team understand they were up eight to start the game, built that lead even more. So now it's about maintaining possessions and slowing the pace down. And here is the tempo change by Melakai Kasiri on the press. But 
Lions just going to slow it down and run a short clock half court offense as Katanic in the pick and roll gets nearly gets the switch skips to Samuelson free on the shot clock Fag Bentley's going to have to turn it over Hamby gets it to go Temi Fag Bentley that's tough really tough move but Katanic could not find the angle for Temi Fag Bentley to give her the ball inside so what she do skips it over to Carly Samuelson who is able to give it inside as Ellenberg Wiley again just can't connect on the interior layup. She's now one of nine on that floor, and that was a long two. But Katanich tried to find Samuelson, but threw the ball in the air, and that will allow Geskin to lay it home 4 2. And now you can see the Kasiri bench just trying to again get press, speed up lines, but they get it over easily with Abby Myers. And Ivana Katanich again will just slow it down and set up a Horns offense for Lions. As Snitsina looking for options. Rob screen Samuelson. She's going to pop to 12 foot. Get it to go, Carly Samuelson. There's one thing executing and making reads to create advantage, but it's another thing scoring after that. This Lions team have come out in the second half really efficient from the field. They are 15 of 22 so far scoring the ball. That's on the interior. 6 of 17 from the perimeter for the Lions, but they'll get a chance in transition. Abby Myers stop, pop, two. The mid-range game is working for this Lions team today. Everyone's getting a piece of the action. And this game is suddenly ballooning out of control for the visitors. They trail by 19 on the night, 27 on aggregate. And don't forget, this is a team in Melakai Kasiri who beat Galatasaray on Saturday Sunday as Ellenberg Wiley strings the three, the third triple for the visitors, and she moves on to five points personal. But not only, Kyla, in that win, Yes, you beat Galatasaray, but you did it with offense, 105 points. Yeah, you'd like to see a bit more of that offense today. You had the, <laughs> talking about offense, we got to talk about Temi Fag Benley with the M1 reverse right there. Uh, ref said, not so fast, my friend, foul on the floor. Uh, yeah, I got a little bit ahead of myself there, but you just got to applaud that move, regardless of if it counts or not. They get the chance to set up on the sideline and again, take off some of this clock in the game. Third personal on Dierica Hamby. Third team foul as well for the visitors. Again, this Spain pick and roll action, Katanich. Skip pass over Hamby to Fag Benley. She'll have to reset to Myers. Myers gonna look to get the three back iron and a good box out by Kuwich. And now you can hear the coach of Kasiri trying to push tempo and get the team to go in transition as Kuic fouled on the interior by Ivana Katanic. And that'll be the fourth person, oh, so fourth team foul on the line, second personal on Katanic. So Lions no more fouls to give in the last 325 of this third quarter. I like that post up by Kuic though. She needs to get herself involved more offensively with only two points on the game. She's one of their leading scorers, so she needs to find ways to start producing for this team today. Yeah the Romanian international best year in Euro Cup women was with Istanbul, 18 points a game, which is, she nearly made this year, but Gezgin able to make the three, and that's back-to-back -back threes by Kasiri. And now the turnovers, line's a little bit sloppy. Kuic gonna line it up, good close out by Myers, but can't get there, and coach Stella Katsudu goes timeout. That's a great job right there by this Kasiri team to weather the storm. I thought, great job changing up their press, getting steals, but if you can hit threes, you can come back in any game. They're starting to light up from outside. And for the visitors, that's the momentum shift you need. And now you've got to sustain. Starts with the defense turning over the Lions. Exactly, we talk about fast break points. That's their ability to push the ball in live situations after turning the lines over and forcing the tough shots on that end. So that's what you need for them, but they struggle with the first half shooting the three. So it's good to see them come out and hit a few to get this deficit a bit closer. Was that a Turkish and Welsh flag I saw in the uh, scarf in the crowd? If so, that's one of the more elaborate half and half guys, but great to see some visitors supporting the Turkish side as well. Obviously, we've seen that with the men as well, with Besiktas in particular. Yeah, it's always good to see. It's always great to have fans travel with you, but we have to talk about this London Lions fan base today. They've been really loud, you can hear them throughout all of it, but not only are they watching, we've got people watching at home, right? Yeah, indeed, and obviously terrific numbers. We appreciate you joining us all season long here with Euro Cup women, and hopefully 
in 13 days time we'll be back here for a potential semi-final so stay tuned for those details dropping a little bit later as london lions going to reset out of that timeout as kasiri cut the gap to 10 points 18 on aggregate as lions out with peddy samuelson myers snitzina and fag benley and Shea Petty getting the ball into hands. The experienced point guard making her copper box debut. Going to just about beat the eight second violation, but Kuric knocks it away from behind. Gezgin finds Hamby. Great extra ball movement. Flop warning as Fag Benley says, get out of here. And Gezgin lying on the floor, touches the ball. London Lions possession. Just as you think there's going to be even more of a momentum switch. Here comes Temi Fag Benley with the big block inside. And again, for the Lions, those little breaks so important, but it's the hustle, the turnover. It was a three on one initially, just a delay, and then he got back to three on three, and Temi just timed that block ever so beautifully. Fag Benley averaging just over a block a game in Euro Cup as Petty skips it to Snitsina. Samuelson will be able to walk into a three and make no mistake. If she can see the rim, it's going up, and it's usually a great shot. She was able to step into that one, no contest and just knock it down. As the ball deflected out of bounds, Abby Myers has been really active on the defense there. Not a huge stat line, but those little things with deflections going. And it's interesting, they're talking about it. And one thing that we have in EuroCup Women's quarterfinals, we have IRS. The head coaches can review this, but they don't need to. In fact, there it is. The away team coach has said they're going to review it. So I believe History is going to be made. Kyla Nelson, we have IRS in a women's game in the UK. Hey, but that's what you need to continue building this game, is the ability to see some things that happen really quick and just to review it to make sure you have the right call. In a game that's so big, so historic, you have to make sure that this decision is right. Indeed, and the referee's just off your screen going to the monitor. So both head coaches, new, those of you new to review systems, even we're a little bit new, but both co coaches get one challenge apiece. You can challenge things like out of bounds, block charge, goaltending, and Kasiri here using it after referees, a little bit of deliberation. So the referee's going to the monitor, will get the best angle available, and we'll see what the decision is. But how important is this for coaches as well to be able to go and review something that you feel passionate about the referees have got wrong? Yeah, that's exactly it. And you will see things from a different angle than some of the referees will. And you just want to make sure you have every chance to get your possession. On the other end, you're also happy because it's like a timeout you don't have to call. You get a chance to set your team up as you see Coach Stella and Coach Krumesh Patel talking to their team right now without using up a timeout on the London Lions side. They're able to draw up a play if they get the ball or talk about what they want to execute defensively if it is this Kateri sideline. Yeah, Two. indeed. And obviously it'll be a press break because Lions have been a little bit scrappy. Obviously Carly able to walk into it as we get the check complete and it'll be off Abby Myers, Melakai Kateri ball. Great challenge by the head coach of the visitors. Emra Asari and the visitors will get 14 on the shot clock. So, head coach is one, referees nil. Let's see if they're any good from the sideline compared to the baseline. Indeed, area that Kasiri are solid in, but not anywhere near spectacular as that baseline out of bounds and Lions able to force it into a half court scenario. Hamburg, so Hamby and Ellenberg Wiley into the pick and roll. Doesn't go, but Hamby on the offensive glass, first put back. But it's a testament to Lions. It's the first offensive rebound of the night for the visitors. It is. It's taken a long time for that offensive board, but you don't want to make that a habit for this Kasiri team. You want to limit them to one shot so you can push the ball and, and be able to control the pace with the ball in your hands. Yeah, and this quarter, much more free-flowing offensively. Lions lead it 24 to 22 as the Cats have seen us goes. Third's not good enough for Euro Cup score. I want to be second. Talking about free flowing, she realized nothing much was going on. She took a drib rhythm dribble into her shot and she just knocks it down like she does a lot of the time. Ellenberg Wiley again off the pick and roll, but a great dig by Samuelson blocked the lane at the elbow where Wiley wanted to go. 
but a drive by Geskin leaves it a little bit too strong off the glass. And Samuelson will now play the point guard for the Lions as Holly Winterburn and Megan Gustafson head to the scorer's table. They'll check in next whistle as we roll into the final 75 seconds of this third, third quarter. Petty, the foul line jumper, no mistake, and she moves up to eight points personal. Great job by her, stopping on the dime, looking at that pass to Temi Fag Benny, which created that space for her to pop and shoot it. But I really like this matchup between the two American guards and Shetty and Ellenberg Wiley. Yeah, and Petty's done a terrific job in that matchup over both legs defensively as Hamby called for the travel. Yeah, she looks a little confused by that call, but she had a happy feet going into that possession, into that drive. She gets a chance to take a seat um, as her teammate Petronite comes in for her. Yeah, and Lions here will have a good opportunity for a two-for-one possession. 48 seconds on the game clock as Holly Winterburn wanting the play call, got it from a combination of Petty and head coach Stella. And Lions will set up now again, Gustafsson. A lot more interior for Megan Gustafsson since the opening quarter, this time she's gonna roll, but Sitznina will pop and get it to go once again. Kat Snitznina, 11 points personal. Yeah, here she goes again, but a great job by Holly Binterburn, who struggled from the field today, really. She did, did a great job with that no-look pass to Katsatsina, who just hit a three. It's all about rhythm and momentum, and she found someone. Five-second game clock, shot clock differential, but Kuric will shoot it early and make it. Kasiri with a 6-3 of the game as Winterburn crosses Ellenberg. Wiley called for the foul on the floor. Holly Winterburn... That was nearly perfect. No look pass to Schoen off with her handles. That was, like you said, nearly perfect. Maybe the ref should have let her keep going for a, the layup, but they've got 2.5 seconds left to finish this quarter strong. Indeed, and obviously with Lions using the timeout, this won't be a situation where Coach Stella wants to burn one, as we've seen so often, using it to draw up play. So see what Lions have got. Two and a half seconds of Winterburn to the corner, going to stop way off to the left. And that will end the third quarter here in East London. London Lions win it 29 points to 25. And they lead 67-51 on the night. 24 points, however, on aggregate is the number. Big number to try and catch up with if you're the Scuseri team in the fourth quarter. But it is still all to play for. It has been done before. And these are high-level players that know how to play the game. The Scuseri team are starting to hit from the three-point line, which could help them bring this deficit in closer. As you see, the London Lions have done a great job on the boards, 25 to 17, finding each other as they always do with 20 assists. And people are making them today for this Lions team at the Copper Box. Gustafsson with 16 points personal, with Samuelson, who both had huge first legs in Turkey, continuing their scoring ways today. Indeed, and yeah, as you see, three Lions players in double digits, but there's someone that really stepped up in that third quarter for the visitors, Claudia Kuric with eight points all in that quarter, as it's important for the visitors now to keep momentum going. That's it, they did a good job in their press. I think we'll see a little bit more of some full court press and traps to try and generate quick scores and turnovers. But for them, they need their star players to start hitting shots and being productive. Kuwich has been eight points now, but was quiet in the first half. Hamby's been up and down with a bit of foul trouble. Ellenberg Wiley would love to take back some little bunnies that she's missed today. So they really need to start upping their offensive production. And at this point, you're down 24, just roll the dice, right? You've got nothing to lose. You've got 10 minutes left of your European campaign. You might as well try something different. Exactly. They just scored over 100 points in the domestic game on Sunday. They know how to score the ball. It's about just being able to be fearless with what they do, run quick hitters on offense, get scores, and second chance points will be huge in this quarter. Yeah, and as for Lions, obviously, Shea Petty as well. The impact in that quarter, six points personal, but she makes so much effort defensively along with her teammate in the backcourt, Ivana Kasanich. Yeah, Kasanich did a great job coming off the bench there, I thought, just controlling tempo, her tempo playing her own game. But Shea Petty right now, eight points, three assists, three rebounds. She does it all. She does it at such a high level. And Coach Stella Katsudu had to bring her back in when they were struggling with the full court press because they understand that she has experience there and she can she can take control with the ball in her hand. Yeah, and it's that defensive presence again, the lead guard for 
Kasiri, Ellenberg, two of 11 shooting, having gone four of 17 in the opening games at six of 28. As Snitsina got the block, but Kuic gets it back, leaves the jumper short, and Abby Ma is able to pull down the rebound, and Kat Snitsina showing that experience again, yet another block to her total. We've seen these Lions do a really good job of being proactive defensively. They're getting digs and in gap help, and there's time to be proactive in the shooting, being able to get that block as a great high-low by Katsuzina, and that's what she does. That's why she's on the floor. She's able to make those reads and make the game so much easier for the likes of Megan Gustafson, who now has 18 points. Yeah, and Snitsina with another assist. She's up to five, a team high for Katsuzina on assist. And I'll tell you who also loved the high-low, sitting just in front of us is Zania Stewart. Queen, Queen Z. Z as Petronite are going against Gustafsson and Megan just reaching in with that left hand instead of walling up and she will send Petronite to the line. Petronite has done a really good job of recognizing a mismatch inside. Like we talked about before, she's not necessarily a back to the basket kind of player, but she's understood that today that has to be a part of her identity, being a, a longer post player in this game. Yeah, and Petronite had some Amazing records against Pex. Obviously, the Euro Cup Player of the Month in January, and to go with it, it was just so efficient. But she tore Pex apart, who obviously knocked out the Caledonia Gladiators as well. Petronite over two legs, 47 points, 30 rebounds, eight assists. A beast, an absolute beast. It just shows the level she can play at. She's got another nine minutes to really up her stat sheet today. As Myers caught in two minds, thought about the three and then picked up the dribble early and had to go into an off-balance floater as Gustafsson tried to get the interior seal. Unfortunately for the visitors, another travel violation as Geskin again couldn't get the ball on the floor before she moved both feet. It's the 12th turnover for the visitors. As Snitsina thought about the long outlet to Winneburn, but again, just a little bit more steady. Find Shea Petty and she'll get the ball back in the half-court offense. You like that one, Hurst? Petty and steady? <laughs> hey, we're making it up as we go, but we might use it once again in the semi-final as Snitsina. I don't know if she'll get an assist for that, but the ball goes into the hands of Megan Gustafson, and she makes no mistake, Megan Gustafson, 8 of 13, and she'll be in consideration for Player of the Month as Kuic knocks down her third triple of the night. And this lead kind of hovers in this 15 kind of point range. And 23 on aggregate. Rem reminder, London Lions won last week in Turkey, 87-79. And that's what allowed them to have that eight point lead coming in tonight as Petty goes to the float a little bit long. And Merv Ari, who's had a really quiet but efficient game for the visitors off the bench, goes as Ellenberg Wiley forces the transition free. But that's the shot you kind of live with because you've got to try something. Also coming back off of, back off of a 34-point scoring outing for Wiley. You have to live with that when you're down in the fourth quarter. She knows she can hit that shot. It's just not really been her day offensively today. Yeah, and that whole series as a whole for Aaron Ellenberg Wiley, the graduate of Oklahoma. Last year played in Hungary with Unique Gior, so Euro League experience as well coming into the season as Winterburn Look one way, finds Gustafsson, and Megan Gustafsson has just picked apart this defense from the perimeter and now the mid-range tonight. Yeah, firstly, this Lions team have done a much better job in their press, finding the ball and giving it to the middle. But Megan Gustafsson, we shouldn't be surprised now. She was the leading scorer in the Euro League last year. She knows how to put that ball in the bucket. And when she's shooting at a rate such as she is today, 10 for 15, I mean, unguardable. Indeed, and obviously, Megan, as we talked, as you talked about in the pre-game, made the Olympics with Spain, and I actually caught up with her before you, before you chat with her as well. She talked about how stressful that was, but also what an opportunity this summer's gonna be to go to Paris and represent in an Olympic Games, and Spain are gonna be one of the favorites to win it all. Absolutely incredible experience for her, and I know her whole Lions team are as excited to see her at that on that stage in Paris. But not only does she have that to look forward to, she has two years in Las Vegas to look forward to with the Aces now after a WNBA off-season signing. Yeah, and you talk, you look at going from elite coach to elite coach here in London with Stella Katsudu and going to arguably the 
probably the well-renowned female coach of them all, Becky Hammond. What well, an absolute privilege to play for that team, not only one year, but two. Indeed, Aces looking for another WNBA championship, but we'll worry about that in a couple of months as Abby Myers, the first round draft pick last year in the WNBA, the little turnaround jumper from 10 foot. Now that's her identity right there, the mid-range stop and pop, her ability to use her footwork, turn around, elevate and finish as Hamby was unable to finish on that side of the basket. As Dierica Hamby, obviously, again, she'll also return to the WNBA after the end of the European domestic season. As Lions looking to push this into the 20 point range for the first time tonight. Currently, biggest lead of the game is this 19 points. As a terrific pass, Myers to Petty, a little bit too long. And Dierica Hamby will pull down her eighth board of the night. Hamby, a new addition with Melakai Kasiri, signed in the end of January. And she replaced Joyner Holmes as the second player on the Kasiri roster. And she lays it home for two. And Joyner Holmes, a really tough ask to replace her. But if you're going to make an upgrade, Hamby's the perfect example. Obviously, Joyner Holmes played against the London Lions last year for Dinamo Kasiri in the Euro Cup. So had that experience, but Hamby's done a terrific job. She has. Uh, she scores another bucket just from her sheer strength over Holly Winterburn. As Gustafsson lays it home again, she's up to 24 points on 10 of 15 shooting. You let her get her, you let her get to that left hand. It's really hard to stop. And there she gets the stop and forcing Hamby just away from the rim. And Holly Winterburn playing point guard for the Lions. She'll Reject the screen off Gustafsson, nasty crossover, Holly Winterburn, highlight play. You see her kind of throw her hands up and they're like, finally I made one. Not her offensive game really, her first point of the game was over four previously, but she's just an ultimate teammate, an ultimate player for this team. She finds ways to stay on the floor from being effective in other ways. And the pick and roll has been great for this Lions team all game long. Indeed as Lions did indeed push it to 20 points on the night. And you say that Holly Winterman obviously struggled last week as well, but coming off that injury again, it's just trying to find some rhythm. Exactly, but the thing is you still have to keep her out on the floor because she, she does so many other things well. She is great off the pick and roll. As we just saw, she has handles for days and she has the ability to find her teammates, averaging over five assists a game because she knows what she can bring. A bigger guard with length, great handles, and it's just nice to see her make a shot today. Indeed, and Holly Winterburn, the thing that we talked about again, that six assists as well, just the really subtle plays, keeps the play, the scorers going with Samuelson, with Snitznina, with Gustafsson, and obviously Temi a quiet night, but efficient. And but again, got to give a shout out to the crowd. Noisy, energetic, and everything you want from a home Euro Cup game. Yeah, they know Lions are making history just being in this quarterfinal right now. We've got all ages, we've got young kids, we've got everyone here supporting the Lions because they know how big this, this is for them. Indeed, and Lions changes on the floor and into the game for the second time. Shanice Beck for Norton. And for Shanice, what an experience this is. Hometown club, being with them through the whole Euro Cup run. And she's happy changing her role for this team. She is, she leads there in her own right. She As Kuwich makes the three in transition. Great job by Kuwich, continuing to play and she's found the three point line in the second half. But going back to Beckford Norton, she's just an ultimate professional. She understands her role, she's still a leader. She's been a part of British basketball for a long time and she'll come in and she'll produce on the defensive end especially. But what a great teammate in Shea Petty to have to learn from. A veteran point guard to be out of guard every day in practice. So you know Shanice Beck for Norton is learning a lot. As Samuelson finds Gustafsson in the post. Tries to go to the right hand. Hamby with the reach and should we get called for the travel ring violation. Megan Gustafsson, good job by Hamby. But the other thing with Shanice Beck for Norton, we've always known her for a defense. But the thing that has improved so much is her perimeter shooting. And she is third in the entire Euro Cup this season at points her possession in spot-up situations as Hamby makes the three. 
and that's a testament to Shanice's hard work. She's 8 of 14 from 3 this year in Euro Cup, but then she also mixes it in on the closeout with the drives to the hoop. That's huge. She's always been known as someone that can get to the rim with pace, as Carly misses the mid-range there. Great job by Megan Gustafson to be able to pick that up for a second chance possession. Back to Shanice Bedford-Norton, though. As you said, 8 for 14 from 3. She doesn't force shots, but when she's open, she's able to make them. As Gustafsson called for the three seconds, didn't quite clear the paint. And for Kasiri, obviously, down 16 on the night, 24 on aggregate. This is probably too far in four minutes to go, but you're starting to pick up a bit of momentum, especially from the perimeter. Really struggled in that first half. They were, I was saying, in the opening quarter, they're one of nine, I think, at one point from three. They're now seven of 18, so they made six of their last nine. Yeah, I bet. I think they kind of wish that came a bit earlier on in this game, but. Maybe their Euro Cup season is done, but they've got a domestic league in Turkey that's really competitive. So they'll use the momentum they can get in this fourth quarter to continue being a dominant threat in their domestic league. Wilkinson, three on the shot clock, double team, going to try and create something and just go, I'll take the turnover, reset, allow defence to go. And you're right. However, small problem if you're Melikai Kasiri. You go home and you've got Fenerbahce on Saturday. Again, you want to get a rhythm right here, then, if that's the matchup you've got next. If they can start hitting it at a high rate, especially from the beyond the arc, it will just give them confidence to shoot early on in that game. Yeah, the favourites um, for the Euro League, as Stella Katsudu forced to burn a timeout as another three, this time by Kuric, and she's exploded up to 16 points personal in this second half alone. Yeah, just like that, she's done a great job of racking up that stat line in the second half. Last game, she also had 16 points, so she's able to get it done and she's doing it from the perimeter right now, after we spoke about the team struggling early on. Indeed, and again, we're just about to say with Fenerbahce, the top team, the team favourites for Euro League, but knocking off Galatasaray, they'll feel like they can go in, adding join the homes in, that they've got a shot in that game. They absolutely have a shot. Talking about shot, all these fans have a shot to win a T-shirt. And that's why it's so loud right now and everyone's on their feet. Because everyone wants a chance to win that London Lions merchandise. Indeed, and you've got a couple of schools in as well, as you can see on your screen. But for Lions, we talk about momentum for the series. Momentum for Lions. The semi-final first leg is next week. You do not want to let your standards slip. Yeah, and they don't have much time to prepare for that. So that means they have to play the right way for the entirety of this game. Everything they do now will have a knock-on effect for their next Euro Cup game. So they just want to be as sharp as possible going into practice this next week. Indeed, as Kuric there, as you see, 16 points. Personal reminder, she was over 4 at half-time. So a great bounce back for her as Lions head out onto the floor with Samuelson, Gustafsson, Beck for Norton, Peddy and Snitzina. Double screen for Samuelson, catch and shoot. Front eye and Carly Samuelson, who has quietened down on the second half, but you've got to give some credit to the Kasiri defenders. Beck for Norton with the defense on Diorica Hamby. Oh boy. Some silence right there for Beck for Norton, I think is appropriate. The fans went wild for that. Everyone thought Derek Hamby had a wide open layup, but no, Beckford Norton didn't give up on the possession, sprinted back, and it just gets worse for this Kasiri team. I think the coach couldn't believe there was a foul on the end and was arguing his case. Emra Asori, who's always a passionate person on the sideline, so many times, both domestically and Euro Cup, we've seen him sprinting up and down the sidelines and it will allow Carly Samuelson to go to the line. Samuelson, a terrific free throw shooter at 85%, having shot 94 for the Sparks last year in the WNBA. Obviously, earned herself a two-year deal with the Washington Mystics as well. So going from a seven or 10-day contract to a two-year deal for Carly Samuelson, terrific. And the coach has got second technical foul in a row on Emra Azuri, and he is ejected from the ball game. And that's a sad way to see your season end in Euro Cup. Yeah, it is a sad way. He's kind of smiling because obviously he doesn't agree with it. But that's not what you want from this Kasiri team. As you said, they have some big time matchups coming up domestically and they need their head coach. But this gives the, the chance to their assistants, to the rest of the team to step up and finish the game. 
Indeed, and the referee's discussing it now, but indeed he will have to leave the venue. As again, talking it over, and it looks like lead assistant, we believe will be Nihat Kamaran to step up. And the Lions fans giving the coach a little bit of stick for leaving slowly. And you always want to be careful in these situations. The last thing you want to do is fever to be upset and give you a fine on the way out too. Yeah, he's starting to make his way he's out there as the fans do it, wave him goodbye. You just missed on the screen there. Carly Samuelson hit the free throw for that technical again. You don't want her on the line where she gets easy shots. She's just going to calibrate that shot and she's going to get in another rhythm from three. Indeed, and now Lions will have possession on the sideline. Extra two points on the scoreboard. So Lions up to 81 points. This is the number one offense in Euro Cup women going into the round of eight. A Snitsina from the car park doesn't quite get it to go. But that felt like the roof would have come off this place. Yeah, the fans are ready to stand up for that one. But Cecina knows that they've got a bit of a cushion there and she can be aggressive from the three-point line, especially how she's been shooting today. As the long three doesn't quite go, but offensive rebound kick out doesn't quite go. It's a great offensive glass pull down by Caracas. And just the third offensive rebound for both teams. Both teams have done an exceptional glove on the defensive rebounding tonight as the Lions getting the support of this hometown crowd as Petty knocked to the floor and that will be the first personal foul in the quarter but unfortunately the fifth and final foul for Gunai and Kyla we need to give her a prop she was sensational tonight. She was one of those games where you're like you ask for everyone to step up and she does exactly that. She had, it was five for nine from the field, 14 points after only averaging for the year. Seven points a game. Seven points a game and 2.5 rebounds. She's really found her ability to get to the rim, which she's known for a shooter. So that's a great job of making the Lions work. As Petty drives, can't quite connect. And the other thing for her is she's on the fringe as Snitsina takes the blocking foul in transition. She's on the fringe of the Turkish national team. She's been in and out the squad, and a performance like this is going to put you on the map for the upcoming windows next year as well, as the referees will reset the ball in the back court. Um, and as for Lions, obviously, we talked about Kasiri going home to play Fenerbahce. They'll come back to the Copper Box here on Sunday for what is going to be a huge crowd. We're expecting over 4,000 here for the doubleheader as Hamby lays it home for two and that will allow some subs to come in for the Lions with Wilkinson and Katanich checking in. The London Lion men have a chance to wrap up the league title here against the Leicester Riders, and then afterwards the women will take on the Durham Palatinites. So a huge double header, so head online to Ticketmaster, get your tickets for that. But what else you can do? As of tomorrow, head to Ticketmaster and get your tickets for the semi-final. Ladies and gentlemen, we're pleased to announce the semi-final second leg that Lions will host will take place in 13 days time, Tuesday, March the 12th, 7 p.m. at the Copper Box. The winner of TTT Riga and Rea Venice. Venice lead that by 13 going into the home leg. And Kyla, we need the fans. You don't want to miss this one, of course. We love the fact that you're listening to us on the stream, but you should hear the fans live at this game if you can't, because they've made a huge difference for this Lions team. They've been able to push this Lions team forward up 81 to 68 with only a minute and a half to go in this game. And I'm thinking there was another technical, because Carly Samuelson's going to the line once again with no lineup. Oh, no, no, no. Correction. That was a throw-in foul. Last two minutes of the game, if there's a foul before the ball is inbounded, it's, it's a 1-3 throw shot and possession. So the equivalent of a technical, but obviously that's the alteration FIBA made to the rule. That used to be a technical foul, which obviously for some players could lead to ejection. So FIBA changed it, added a throw-in foul, and that's what that was. So that's why Samuelson went to the line for one, as Lions with the press break. Beckford Norton's going to recycle the ball and you can see Coach Stella there clapping her hands, just encouraging the right decision. Slow the game down. You're up 14 on the night. As the attendance announced in the cop box here, just a few under 1,500 as Samuelson 
keeps the ball and a shot clock violation for the Lions. And Carlo, we've talked about it. We want fans here. 1,500 is the target. We want to see 3,000 for the semi-final. I think that's absolutely doable. We're in the heart of London. Huge historic game, as we keep talking about. Every game from now on is historic for this Lions team. And they just want as many people supporting them. And just watching high-level women's basketball in England is such a privilege that you shouldn't go without. And changes for the Lions. Mayor Price and Faye and Dean checking in. Two integral parts of Lions, especially in Dean. The last time we had a Turkish team here, Faye and Dean, 12 assists in the ball game. Yeah, she does an incredible job just coming in and, and getting better every game. What a privilege for the both of them to be able to play in such a high level competition and, and be able to have the ball in their hands during it too. And, and Dean is trusted as their point guard a lot of the time when she's on the floor. Yeah, and Maya Price has done a terrific job, obviously missing the first half of the season with injury, but come in, especially domestically, big impact, four and a half point six rebounds a game in just 16 minutes of action. As she'll get her home Euro Cup debut as Wilkinson, a little bit long, fight for the rebound. That's where Maya Price has been terrific, fighting and on for the rebounds as Hamby crosses over, beats Wilkinson and will earn a trip to the foul line. Derek Hamby's had a quiet night by her standards, but quiet night is still 16 points, nine rebounds with two free throws to come. Yeah, very quiet, Michael. No, for her standards, absolutely. Obviously, with her averaging just under 25 points a game, but I love that she's still being relentless, regardless if this game is done or not. She's still being aggressive and getting her extra points. Indeed, and obviously, Dira Kahambi, part of that spell, that 34 points against Galatasaray, who have got an uphill battle themselves in Euro Cup. They will head to Girona tomorrow to try and pull down a, a comeback as Hamby called for the reaching foul. That is her fourth personal foul on the night. Obviously, Galatasaray in the other half of the draw with Girona, and they'll take on the winner of Montpellier and Besiktas. Besiktas with a commanding lead in that one, and a particular team we've seen a little bit of in this prep for this game. They can score the ball, Besiktas, in a hurry. They absolutely can. As the shot clock is off, so Ivana Katanic is going to have the pleasure to dribble it out. And for the first time in history, we have a British team in the Euro Cup semi-finals. London Lions 82, Melakai Kaziri 70. Just look how much it means to this Lions team. They know what they've just done. They've booked themselves a place in the semi-finals of the Euro Cup women competition. Just like that, they've made more history at the Copper Box. And you can tell they do it together and they do it with so much fun. Indeed, and it means so much every game. They know what, they have an opportunity and they want to excel it. And Lions going to 12-0 and 0 in the season in Euro Cup. Almost impossible. Almost, but they've proved it's possible and they've done it the right way. Coach Della Katsadu has done an incredible job preparing these ladies for such high-level basketball. And all she wants is them to be able to do it together and enjoy their time whilst playing such great basketball. But look at them dancing together. And, and team camaraderie is what it's all about. If you have great connections with your teammates, you're likely going to play a better And game in of comes basketball. Katie Cox. I don't know where she's been. She's rocking an England tracksuit, which just shows, again, Katie Cox, that dual sport athlete but terrific performance by the Lions, winning this aggregate tie 169-149. And Kyla, no doubt where the MVP, not just of today was, but the series, Megan Gustafson. I thought I was allowed to say it. You didn't wait for the pause. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone guessed it, and it's the right thing. She was an absolute beast all over the court today. Megan Gustafson is just proving it again at this level. And she's so exciting to watch. The lefty, we talked to her before the game and all she had to say was how much she enjoyed being in London with her teammates as they celebrate with the crowd right now. And we just have to emphasize how big this is for British basketball. We've never seen this in the history of the sport here in England. And the Euro Cup semi-finalists 
it has a good ring to it, right? Indeed, and you can see Azania Stewart Cat giving one of her, uh, Paige Robinson, the former London Lion, the big hug. But Azania Stewart's got the Instagram out and she is celebrating this like she's still part of the roster, which we love to see. Yeah, and she helped kind of build the momentum for this Lions team. She was that veteran that came out of retirement to play back at home in London because she saw the vision of what this program could be and they're, they're proving her right. Indeed, and you can see opposite corner, we just have a look. Uh, the GM Vanya, assistant GM Jacob, just catch up with coaching staff and they're just beaming out with pride and smiles. I think everyone in this arena today is beaming out with pride and smiles. Look at all the kids, how much it means to them to see this live and it's just been a great outing for the sport. Indeed, and obviously as the players go round, we talked about Megan, 24 points, six rebounds, 50 points in the tie. But we've got to give out a shout out to Carly Samuelson, 25 last week, 19 tonight, including another four from the perimeter. And she just made them in early in the game when lines were a little bit rocky. And they always go to her early because they know she's so stable from the perimeter. But just her read, she creates advantages off of different types of screening actions. And what was impressive with her today was nine rebounds by her. Both her and Megan Gafterson were able to be efficient from the field. Megan was 10 for 15, 66%. Carly Samuelson, 6 for 11, 54%. They're up against some tough defenders and are still able to score at a high level. Indeed, and obviously more photos going on, but Lions really delighted with this, but it's really important now. This Venice team is going to be tough, and you've got to keep shooting both on the interior and the perimeter. And the interior tonight, 24 of 36, 67%. That's the game right there. And Kasiri didn't shoot a bad percentage of 48, but 67 is incredible, especially when you're winning on the rebound battle by eight and you're getting more assists and sharing the ball. It's a hard team to beat right now. And the area improvement for the Lions, those turnovers again crept up to 16 in the end. And as you move forward, they've just got to trim a little bit. And there's your two-legged score, 79-87 in Turkey last week. Here, 82-70. And the Lions win 169, 149 on aggregate. And Lions move on. Another mention as well, Kat Sincina, 11 points off the bench, as you see. Two of Megan's, 24. And then Shea Petty, who struggled early, but then just grew into the game. Eight points, three assists for the veteran. Yeah, everyone chipped in today and did more than enough to secure this win at home. And Efficiency-wise, I mean, Katzenzina, four for five. Great job by her. Temi Fugbenli, 50% from the field. These girls are getting it done. Indeed, and obviously we've got to mention the visitors. Malachi can see a really good team for long spells, fought with Lions, and obviously that nine-minute spell today, end of the first quarter into the second, with that two-point gap, really blew this game out. Dierica Hamby, 18 points, nine rebounds. Claudia... Kucic, big second half, 16 points, nine rebounds. And then obviously our player of the game for the visitors, Gunai, 14 points as well. And they've got a tough ask now in the Turkish league, bouncing back, trying to secure a playoff slot. They're currently tied for that eight seed. As they head to play Fenerbahce on Saturday, 12 p.m. tip UK time, 3 p.m. for that game. And the London Lions, of course, will come back here to the Copper Box Arena and take on the Durham Palatinites as they look to move to 12 and 0 on the season. But for Lions, full steam ahead 